population densities. Now, in, pop, in areas where we have low population density, we always have abundant resources because there will be little or no people to struggle or to fight for their resources. So it will be abundant to the, the, the people settling there. And there is no crime rate. The government or the bodies responsible for security of the, of the town will be able to checkmate the activities of the people living there because they are dealing with low populated people or low population density and now uh, we have adequate planning and because of the low population the government and other agencies uh, responsible can effectively carry out planning of um, the town and maybe planning of uh, other projects within the town because of the low population and there's regular traffic flow you hardly find congestion, traffic congestion in low populated areas. So, and also the standard of living is high because of the low population in the area. Now we have low pressure also on the social amenities. The, the social amenities like the roads, the water, maybe education or uh, schools built by the government will have experienced low pressure on, the, on them because of low population. However, we also have disadvantages that result from uh, this situation, I mean the situation of low population density. Now there is inadequate labor force. You will not find enough or capable people to carry out uh, most of the work, available work in those areas because you have just a handful of people around. And there is underutilization or deterioration of infrastructure. The government could build, they could set up uh, most of these amenities or infrastructures, but there may be no people to use them and as such there will be these equipment or these uh, facilities and infrastructures will begin to deteriorate and as such will benefit the government and the entire people little or nothing and that means they must have wasted resources which is a disadvantage after all now there is poor defense you know, due to low population, you may not handily or readily find people who may come together to form a force or a defense. And this is a, a disadvantage also. And finally, we have low output or wastage of output. And the, 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 the product produced may be low due to low population. And also, even the low products produced or the small products produced may be, may be wasted because there are no ready buyers, no ready markets to buy and to consume the products. Now, let's consider population quality. This refers to the average potential work capacity of members of a given population. It is the number of people capable of contributing to the general well-being or progress of the population. Seven factors contribute to the quality of uh, a given population. Now, these factors include quality education. You discover that in a given population where a greater part of the population are given quality education, they are properly educated and trained, you will find that many 
people in that area, in that given location, will be available to carry out meaningful work that will add value to that given population. Also, the technology level of that population is a factor. A population with high level of technology will always have ample members who will be able to do important work or carry out important work for the general well-being of uh, the population. Now, basic infrastructure. Presence of basic infrastructure can also enhance the population quality of a given population. Now, sickness or diseases is another factor. A population where our members are sick or affected by any disease, let's say HIV and the likes, such a population will have a low quality because sick people cannot perform good work. And as such, on the other hand, if the people making up the, 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 the population of the area are healthy and well to do, they will have a high quality of people in the area able to carry out whatever work is assigned to them. Now let's look at population movement. You can say migration. Population movement or migration is a movement of people from one geographical location to another. And this usually involves a permanent settlement or temporary settlement. So that means people could leave one location to another and settle there permanently or settle there temporarily as the case may be. Now, the location where the people are living is called the source area or source region. Whereas the location where they are going into or entering into is referred to as a destination or the receiving area. Now, there are two types of migration. We have one, emigration. Emigration is a movement of someone out of his or her country. That is movement out of one's country. Two, we have immigration. Immigration here means a movement into another country. People moving out of the earth and going into another country. That defines immigration. There are various forms of migration. We have rural urban migration. That's movement from rural areas to urban areas. We have rural, rural migration. As the name implies, movement from one rural area to uh, another rural area could be urban rural, movement from an urban area to a rural area. We also have urban urban, and we have international migration. International migration is movement from one country to another. Now, there is also seasonal migration. For instance, people moving during uh, summer holidays abroad, this is classified as seasonal migration. There are factors also affecting migration. Why do people have to move from one area to another? Certainly, something must be responsible for this movement. One, we have natural disasters. You will find people living or moving out of places 
where there is constant occurrences of natural disasters like flood, like uh, earthquakes, like volcanoes, etc. People will tend to move from those areas to safe places without physical conditions. Conditions, physical conditions like the climate of the area, the soil of the area also contribute to the movement of people from one area or location to another. People will tend to leave areas where the soil is less fertile to areas where it is fertile to, in order to carry out agricultural activities. We have insecurity. Areas where there is high level of insecurity will experience high level of people living such areas. For instance, in Nigeria, we have high level of insecurity in the northeast of the country, Bono, where there have been series of bomb blasts and attack by the Boko Haram sect. That has led to uh, many people leaving those areas to safer places where they can settle down with their families and at least have a peace of mind. So that's a factor also responsible for migration, employment opportunities. People can travel from one area to another, from rural to urban areas, from one country to another, in search of employment opportunities.